Hi everyone. How is everybody doing this wonderful Sunday? I just thought I would come on today as a little impromptu live. Uh, gonna just kind of do some touch-ups on her. I did this the other night um, live on the Aussie Decor Transfer page. This is their Dapple Brown um, decoupage paper. Isn't this stuff beautiful? This thing is gorgeous. But when I put it on, this where the actual design is, let's see if I can bring you guys a little bit closer so you can see this. It's kind of a little bit of a different color. It's more like a, a creamier look. And I don't want to have that showing. Plus, I didn't finish the edges knowing I was going to do stuff in here with it. Hey, everybody, when you come on, say hello. I actually wasn't sure anybody would come on today, but I just wanted to do a live anyways. All right, and so what I want to do is I'm going to take a little bit of the drop cloth, a little bit of chocolate, and then I'm going to spice this baby up using some of my patina paints. Patina paints can be used as a paint. They don't have to be used and patinaed. So I'm not going to patina this, but I do want this bronze shimmer, and I also want this copper shimmer, and I don't want to use gilding waxes for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to paint this. So the first thing we're going to do is um, actually start with the top drawer here. I'm going to pull this out just a tiny bit so that what I might do is graduate them. I might lie. I might start with the bottom drawer. Let me back this up a little bit so we can get the bottom drawer in. Yeah, guys, this is my painting clothes. You guys get to see me in my painting clothes today. Not all fancy. All right, no makeup, painting clothes, just trying to get this baby done. I'm actually going to start with the bottom one because I don't want a chance dropping paint onto the drawer that I already worked on. These drawers, by the way, I still have to do the glides and stuff on them. As you can see, they don't slide in and out very well. Usually this, the glides and the insides of the drawers, I do them last. Hey, Jerry, I do them last because, um, okay, I shouldn't say I always do. If I know it's something I can do last, I do it last. But before I start painting, I always look to see if there's any repairs that have to be done before I paint. Meaning like, if I try and do the repairs after I paint, it might ruin the paint that I did. This won't ruin the paint. I just have to grease the glides and, um, and do different things with them. So, all right, so let's start with, I'm actually gonna start with drop cloth here on the edge and over on that edge because that's actually the color that I think is gonna blend the most. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of chocolate into that. So I keep my paints in these little bottles. You can get them at the Webstaurant store. As a matter of fact, I had a big bin of them around here somewhere because I'm about to put a bunch more paints in them. I like them in here because I can control how much I use. I don't taint my paint jars that I go to paint with and um, kind of saves my paints. And I use a little scraper on the insides of my jars to get them in there. So I use every single bit of it. Now, some people use the 16 ounces. I only use the 16s for like my top coats um, and my paints that I use a lot, like fluff, caviar, midnight sky, things that I use a lot on my furniture, I keep in the bigger jars. The other ones, uh, bigger containers, the other ones are in the smaller containers because I don't open them as much. So um, I want them to stay nice and sealed. So I'm not always in them, kind of checking them out. All right, so I'm gonna put a little bit of chocolate in here. I actually might get on the floor for this one because I think it's gonna be easier for me, even though we all know what happens when I get on the floor. I usually can't get off the floor. All right, so I'm gonna bring this just a little bit closer and down. There we go. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is, as you guys see, I have three different brushes because I'm not sure which one I'm gonna use yet. But then I also have my Best Dang Wax Brush. Guys, these things are amazing for blending. If you're gonna be doing blending, I have to tell you, I actually started blending on the side of this dresser. Um, after I'll try and spin it around so you guys can see it. Um, but this thing is, if you're not, uh, I blend a lot. Oh, yeah, let me get out into the camera here, guys. Sorry. I blend a lot, but I have to tell you, even as somebody that blends a lot, it really, really helps. So let me get my towels. When you go to paint and you're mixing and blending colors, hey, Sarah, always keep towels with you too because you, don't, you wanna make sure you offload your brush in between colors, if you don't offload your brush, they will muddle up, muddle up. Hey, Sarah, this is the new Aussie decor um, decoupage. Um, they, have the, they have the silk fibers in them. These things are awesome. 
So, as you know, Sarah, I love all the decoupage papers we work with. Um, you and I work with a lot of the same ones. Um, this one and HP Distributing's uh, decoupage papers are probably by far my favorite. They don't bleed. They're thick enough that you can work with them a little bit. And they adhere so nicely. And the colors are so stinking bright. Like, stinking bright. That's, a, that, that's actually like a real term. It's called stinking bright. Look it up. All right. So let's start with, I think that I'm actually going to use my medium brush. And you guys are going to kill me. I usually have all my stuff in front of me. Let me go get my mister. I want to make sure I use this mister because um, you always want to dampen your brush before you start. So stand by, everybody. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. All right, here we go. That was quick. It was literally right around the corner. I was cleaning stuff with it today. Um, wicked bright as we... Yeah, Sarah said, we call it wicked bright as us New Englanders say. I agree. Wicked wicked bright by fa is actually how it really goes. All right, so let me bring this over just a little bit. Um, I'm going to work on this side right here first. It's the closest to me. It's easier. So the first thing I want to do is I want to dampen my brush. When you are painting with chalk paints, any type of chalk paint, chalk mineral paint, whether it be Dixie Bell, Annie Sloan, I prefer Dixie Bell. Um, I do use some of Ratikit's paints, but I typically prefer Dixie Bell. Miss Lillian's my new favorite too. You still always dampen your brush. And what happens is it helps the paint load to your brush and go on smoother. And I absolutely always use it for the second coat because the second coat, dampening your brush and misting, absolutely puts it on smooth. All right, so let's start with this first. So I'm just got, I actually just have a little bit. Can you guys see how much I have on there? I really don't need a lot on there. And I'm going to just paint the sides a little bit. But what I want to do is I'm kind of rubbing it where it meets up to the decoupage paper. Do you guys see how I'm doing like a circular motion? And now I actually... I'm going to take a little bit on my, I have a Dixie Bell Mini. I do prefer Dixie Bell brushes, guys. People ask me all the time. I prefer Dixie Bell and Zebra brushes. And the reason being is for me, they're just way easier to work with. All right, so what I did is I took a little bit of brown, just a tiny bit of the chocolate, but then I offloaded it on the edge over here because I really don't want a ton. I just want enough to give it a little bit. And I am just dapping it on. So I'm literally tapping it because I kind of want that rough look to it. So I'm just tapping it on. It gives it a little bit of texture and gets it to where it needs to be. All right. Do you guys see how I just did that? I'm going to bring you guys just a little bit closer so you guys see. Hey, Heather. All right. Let me see if I can get this. It's not going to... You know what? When we're done, I'll take it off of here and I'll show you the edges. But that's the first one. Now let's get to the second one, right? So let's open this up. I'm just going to bring this back. I'm only going to do one side at a time. Actually, you know what? I'm lying. I'm going to do the other side just so that I can be even with them. All right, so let's go over here. I'm just going to take a little bit on my brush. It's already damp because I dampened it the first time. You guys see, remember I told you just a little bit. It's just enough. Oh, maybe a little bit more, actually. <laughs> it's just enough that I want to coat over here a little bit. And I am swirling the brush to put it on. What I'm doing is I don't want a huge... I want to blend it with the decoupage paper that I put on here, right? See how that blends it right in over there? And then I'm going to, again, this was my brush that I used for my brown. I'm going to dip it. It's chocolate, actually, is the name of the paint. I'm just going to dip it, but then I'm going to offload it because I don't want a lot on there. I want just enough that I'm going to start over on the edge, and I'm just going to dap it. Dapple it. I, it's funny because this um, piece is called Dapple Brown. So it's going to be my new technique. I did need a little more on there on the edges. I'm just tapping it. Because I don't want it I want to have that textured look I'm also turning my brush as I do it 
so that it kind of gives it. And I even am bringing it in a little bit. Do you see how I brought it in a little bit? I'm actually going to do that over here too. See how I bring it in just a little bit? So that it kind of blends it in just a little bit differently. All right. So now that we're done that drawer, let's go to the second drawer. And again, I told you guys, my sliders have to be greased. I haven't done it yet. It's the last thing that I do on my pieces. And I take them out. I do the insides of the drawers. I do the insides of the drawers with Mama's Butter because I like to have the Mama's Butter on there. Hi, everyone. I like to have the Mama's Butter on there um, because I like, number one, the smell of it. And then, again, um, it just works really well. And then if I have to really, really grease it up, I do have some stuff that's called uh, slideys. All right, you guys ready? So we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to go over here, and I am just going to swirl it. I am just looking to blend it in with that edge so that we don't have such a distinct edge on here. So I swirled the white. Now, you'll notice, too, that I'm only working one side at a time. There's a reason for that. Whenever you're blending, it's best to use small areas at a time. Again, the chocolate is on here. I'm tapping it off. And then I am just tapping the edges. I want to give this like almost like a textured look. Now this one, I'm not going to go too far in on the bottom here like I did because this isn't the bottom drawer. So like on the top, I'll go around the top a little bit. But for this one, I just, because it's the bottom, it's the side, I'm not going to do that. And now I'm going to go over here to the other side. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take some of my drop cloth. Let me get you over to here. When you guys come on, please say hello. Let me know where you are watching from. Again, I know I'm repeating myself, but there are some that are coming on while I'm teaching. I am just swirling my brush. I'm not trying to like super coat the piece. I'm actually just trying to blend it in with that. You see what I mean? So then I'm going to take that. Now I'm going to take my chocolate again. Put some on here. Offload it. I'm going to start on the edges because that's where I want it the darkest. And then I'm just going to bring it on in. Can you guys see how I just tap it? I just tap it to give it some texture and dimension. And I think I might put a little bit extra on that edge. Hold on just a sec. Oop. Not enough paint on there. Here we go. All right. I just wanted a little more on that edge. Can you guys see how I just kind of tap that on? And when I tap it on, it gives that texture look. All right, let's get to the next one. Let me get this out of here. We're going to go to the next one. And I'm going from top to bottom. I mean, bottom to top, I'm sorry, because I want to make sure that I'm not um, dropping paint on my pieces underneath me. Again, so I'm going to take the drop cloth. I'm going to put this on over here. And I'm only going to be going up to where it meets up with my drawer. And again, I'm just doing a swirling motion. Oops, I got a little bit of a hair. The other thing, guys, if you ever have a brush that sheds a hair, do not pick it out. Try and get it to the edge. If you pick it out, you can get your bottom primer off of there and everything as well. And you don't want to do that. On this one, I think I'm actually going to do both edges at the same time because they're just smaller edges. Now, if I was doing a bigger piece, bigger edges, I probably would not do this. I don't probably. I know I wouldn't. And the reason is, is because if you work with a smaller area, it's easy to blend before it all dries in its own way. All right, so I'm just blending it into where the edges of my decoupage paper had met up. And now I'm going to just kind of dap that in there, tap it, tapping it on. As you guys saw, I offloaded the brush before I kept going. And again, I'm just trying to get some texture in here. Let's see how much I got on here. I probably could have offloaded it a little more on the other one, on the other side before I got to here, because I shouldn't have this much on here. 
and I'm just lightening it up. So I'm going gradual. As I go further in, I'm actually going more gradual with it because I want it to blend. Let me see. I just want to kind of soften this up. I think there's, it's not as a gradual softening as I wanted it to be. Now, say it's not. You guys can actually take your white or the drop cloth as it is in this area, and you can just go ahead wreck right over it and then fix it to where you want it to be. And then our top drawer, which is our last drawer, I'm gonna take some of the drop cloth and I'm going to, now this one I'm actually gonna go around the top because the decoupage paper, I'm gonna go up for this one, I'm actually gonna stand up. Sorry guys, it's just easier on my knees. The decoupage paper actually stops before the top of this. So I do want to kind of take a little bit of this paint. I'm going to do it over here. So I'm just going to do this with it first and then I'm going to swirl it. And I'm doing a swirling motion because I don't want a lot of paint on here. I just want enough to be able to kind of blend it with the decoupage paper. I don't want it to be such a distinct difference from the decoupage paper to where my drawer ends. You can even go into the paper a little bit if you think that you need to get in there to be able to get that in there really good. All right, so now here's the last part of it on again. We're gonna take some of the chocolate. I'm gonna take it on here then I'm gonna offload it because I don't want it to be on here terribly. And then what we're gonna do is just like on the bottom one when I came around, so I'm gonna do it on the sides first. I'm just lightly tapping just to give it that texture, but I actually am gonna come around a little bit because I want it to round off just like I did on the bottom ones. And I might just bring it across. All right, let's go back over to here. I just wanna offload it onto here. I'm just tapping it with my brush. It just gives it just a little bit of texture. Just a little bit, just to kind of blend it in a little bit. And again, I'm gonna come around on a circular motion Now you will have areas that are heavier, but that's okay. It just gives it a little bit more distinct of its own like uh, character, I guess is the best way to put it. Now I'm going a little bit into it because I want it to really blend it well. And in this decoupage piece, there's actually dots of different colors in here. So it's okay that I'm kind of blending it like this because it's just kind of bringing it in. So I want to make sure I match the other side though. That's the biggest thing. <laughs> Is kind of give a little bit of similar to the side. Can you guys see that? So now, the other thing is I'm not using a lot of pressure. As you guys see how I'm just kind of like swinging it. Sometimes when I do my um, my texture, that's what I'll do because then it's not anything that's distinct, right? It's just kind of on there. All right, now let me push this back. You guys see that? Look how awesome that is. So I'm gonna actually push these back in. And what I want to do next is I'm actually going to take some of the copper and I'm just going to do a few little highlights here and there and then as well with the bronze. Okay, so one of the things about your patina, um, mine's been used so much you can see it all around the edges. You do need to shake it up. And you, if you're using it as patina, you should stir it. But if you're using it just to paint, you can use that. Let me grab another chip brush for you guys though. I want to make sure I don't overdo this. All right, so the best thing to use is just a cheap chip brush, but this is actually my premium Dixie Belle. And I typically try and use the cheap ones because I don't want them to get all gross on me. <laughs> all right, so what you do is you're just gonna dip it in here. You're gonna get a little bit of that on there because it's, it's nice that it's like a metallic look, right? But I'm actually gonna offload this because I don't want so much on there. All right, and I'm just going to do a little bit here. 
a little bit, a little bit. The real zing is going to be when I do the actual bronze on there. Let me stir this up just a little bit. It's kind of giving me offload it again. I'm actually going to offload it onto my paper towel to kind of give it a little bit more. See how it gives it dimension because you're using more than one color as you're I just keep calling it dappling, but you're like tapping. You're tapping other colors into it, right? All right, so now I'm gonna wipe this down and I'm actually gonna use some of my, actually this is uh, bronze. I'm gonna shake that really good. This one hasn't been opened yet, so I'll probably have to pull a seal off of it. Yeah. I go through a lot of these, so the seals are most likely the new ones if they're not all corroded on the side because I don't close them right. All right, so this is a new one and it's got like a, a film on it. Hold on, I might not be using this one, hold on. Oh, it's the first of my uh, paints that's had a huge seal on it like this. You can tell that I haven't used it in all, at all. All right, so now that it's open, I'm just going to take a little bit of this on the edges. I'm going to kind of offload it into my brush a little bit. And now I'm going to do a little bit of this one on here as well. I might actually use some of my steel magnolia on this as well because I'm thinking that I might want to do a little bit of metallic texturing with it just to kind of give it a little bit of oomph if you know what I mean. You know what? I am. All right, guys, I'm going to go get my, my other one and we're going to use that as well. I have it right over here. All right, let's do some steel magnolia. It'll lighten it up just a tiny bit. I do think it needs a little bit of lightening up. It is quite dark. I'm gonna put it on the other side of this because I won't, and I like that it's gonna give it the, still that shimmer. So I have my other Dixie Belle brush here, my mini. And again, I'm gonna offload it. Yeah, I like that it has that. It mutes it a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's it right there. It gives it just enough shine. So you guys, as you guys can see, sometimes what I think I'm going to do when I actually start a piece is not what happens. I start working on it and then I go, yeah, I think I need to do that instead or this. In my mind's eye, I was only using the copper and the, um, here, let me go around. I just realized you guys can't see what I'm doing. I was only using the copper and the bronze, but now that I have the steel magnolia on my brush, I'm like, yeah, that's kind of what I like. See how it gives that in and it's blending that in for me. All right, again, we're gonna come over to this side, same thing. When you come on guys, say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. I know I've seen a few of my girls on here already, which I'm shocked because it's a Sunday and most of those girls are doing family things. So. I'm actually excited and shocked that they were on here. <laughs> All right, so I think I meddled this with my drop cloth, so I'm gonna put a little bit more on here. Here we go. I'm gonna take a little bit more of that steel magnolia. It's just on the side of my brush right here. I'm gonna offload it just a tiny bit. And again, it's just enough give it that look. Wow, I'm really liking her a lot. I think I might take some of it up here. I really actually like it even more with the steel magnolia, like put onto it. I mean, wow. 
I actually think that now, because I've done it, after doing it, I kind of think that I might want to do some on the bottom here. So again, I'm going to do the same process. Because this already has like a look of the lighter color, which was the drop cloth, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to start go straight to my chocolate and just going to do a little bit under here. All right, then I'm going to take a little bit of this, which is my metallics. Those were my bronze and copper. They're kind of mixed on there. And now I'm actually going to use the steel magnolia. There we go. Yeah, I kind of like that one better. I think I might take a little bit of this in there too. Look at how stinking cute she is. I might just kind of doing some touch-ups here on the side. I just kind of want them, it's a little uneven in the center. You can tell that it's not centered on very well, um, but that's okay. I am going to use some paints. You can take paints to give that illusion like it is centered. And it's not centered because of the way the design is. As you can see, the design is actually side heavy over there to over here. So it kind of gives that illusion, but I do want to give it that paint in there again. All right, guys, so this is Dapple Brown. I just wanted to come on today, kind of give you guys um, just a quick live and say hello. I really hadn't been doing a lot of lives lately, but I'm trying to get back doing them with you guys and doing some more teaching. So if you guys like this video, please sprinkle it around, like it, share it with your friends. And by the way, Tuesday night, I'll be live on the HP distributing page, um, doing a little fun with some Miss Lillian's paints. Anyways, join me there Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Bye, everyone.